January auto loans have finally dropped. So let's talk about it. If you guys don't know, my name's Tommy. I've been in the car business most of my adult life, done sales on finance, now I negotiate car deals. Enough about me, let's talk about rates. If you haven't seen this series before, I'm gonna start off by going with the public rates and then I'm gonna go into manufacturer incentivized rates. So let's start with public rates. If you've seen this series before, you guys know PenFed has a permanent spot on this list because they always have such competitive rates. If you guys don't know, PenFed is a credit union that anybody can qualify for. You just go on there, apply. You'll probably have to open a $5 savings account, but that's it. But rates as low as 5.94, but for most people, you're gonna be in the low sixes, which is definitely better than most credit unions. So if you're looking for a pre-approval to compare with the banks, you definitely wanna to go to PenFed to start it out. Now the number one spot on this list actually goes to Bank of America, which shocks me because banks normally don't beat credit unions, but they are absolutely killing it with rates right now. I had one of my clients that actually used Bank of America that got their rate all the way down to 5.49. So again, if you have a relationship with them, these rates are even lower, but 5.89, and this isn't just a 36 month loan. He actually got 5.49 up to 72. So it was an incentivized rate. This was on a new car. So understand you should always check Bank of America because they are doing great things. Yes, you have to buy the car from the dealer, but for us, we just got pre-approved and actually sent the dealership a check. We didn't actually have to have the dealership deal with it. So understand this is definitely a high possibility. Bank of America crushed at this time. Let's talk about BMW first. They're coming off with 2.99 in almost all their models, the Series 3, all their X models. Now, electric cars are at 1.9, which is something to consider if you're buying. Most people like to lease those, but again, if you are willing to eat that depreciation, 1.99 is not a bad rate at all. If you're willing to buy a Chevy, well, there's some decent deals, 1.9 and 2.1. I don't understand a 2.1% rate. Why do they do that? I just feel like they're trying to be different, but I just don't like it. So 2.1% on the Trailblazer, which is a popular vehicle, even though I'm not a big fan of it. There's some extra cash in Incentives above and beyond that. But if you're looking for a Silverado, 1.9 at 36 months is not a bad deal. Ford did not wow me with their specials, but there's something to note. They are offering 0% on the Escape. I am not a fan of the Escape. I've talked about it many times. Also, not a fan of the Edge. I'm not a fan of a lot of things that Ford is doing lately. I do like the Mach E. I think it's a good car. So if you are looking for a 0% at 36 months or 1.9 up to 60, it's definitely a route to go. If you're buying an F 150, I think it's one of the best vehicles that Ford makes. Obviously, you can get 2.9 all the way out to 72 months, which is a huge win if you're looking to buy a truck. A combined Honda and Acura here, but they're all basically the same, 3.9, 4.9. Now, the only exciting one here is the Ridgeline, which is 0.9%, but I'm not a fan of the Ridgeline. So if you're willing to buy a subpar truck, then by all means, go for it. Realistically, 2.9 and 3.9, nothing really crazy on Honda. Hondas are still standing pretty strong right now because the availability is still tough to get, even though there is some getting more and more availability. As availability comes in the next few months, I expect these rates to start to drop. Now, throwing into Hyundai, Hyundai was still offering the 0%. I loved how so many people said these December deals are crazy, but a lot of these manufacturers, January's incentives are actually better. They're actually offering a bigger rebate on the Tucson, the 2,500. I want to say it was $2,000 before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the 0% is on the Tucson and Santa Fe. So they actually kept that all the same. If you're looking to buy a Hyundai, they've had some struggles lately, but realistically, you can still get some great deal. Now, in my opinion, I think Jeep needs to do something because they need to refresh this market. They've been doing this 10 to 15% off thing for way too long, and it's just kind of getting old and stale. Realistically, they're offering 2.9% on their Grand Cherokees, $2,000 cash which is nice and no payments up to 90 days, but I think that's kind of overblown. Realistically, they needed to find something to refresh, maybe 0% might get people more excited with some rebates, but people aren't buying Jeeps. They're still overloaded with the inventory and they have to fix something. So I'm not really excited about what Jeep's doing in January. Lexus is doing more of the same, very similar to that 2.49% they were actually offering December. They just moved into January. Again, rates don't change that dramatically month over month, even though there was a crazy deal at the end of the year, but realistically they're not. So there's some rebates that are in some of these cars. So always look for that. Realistically, if you're like buying an RZ, for example, you want to lease that because there's 15 grand in rebates on that car if you lease it. So the RZs are great if you're willing to do an electric SUV, but realistically 2.49, not bad for a luxury SUV. Lincoln is 3.9. People were upset I didn't have that on there. I normally don't talk much about Lincoln. They're a good brand. They're not great. 3.9% of the 72 months is pretty impressive on all those vehicles. Now, if we're talking about Mazda, Mazda is still doing some impressive deals. If you see my videos, you guys know I'm a big fan of Mazda and what they've been doing lately. I just think they're the perfect uh, balance between luxury and performance and cost. But 0% on the CX-5 is awesome, but they actually added some really cool vehicles. The 0.9% is available for the CX-5, the CX-90. If you want a Miata, you can have that. 1.9 is available for CX-50s. And depending on your market, I've actually seen 0% and 0.9 for the CX-50 as well. So make sure you go into the manufacturer website to check your rebates because these rates could be slightly different depending on where you live. Mazda's changed it up depending on your region. If you wanna buy a Nissan, by all means go buy a Nissan, but the incentives are just okay. They seem better than what they actually are. 0% on the Murano is nice,
nice, but the Murano is definitely due for a redesign and that is going to happen any day now. It is kind of an outdated design, even though it's a comfortable SUV. So understand that the Murano is gonna get crazier and crazier incentives. So if you could hold off on the Murano, I think it's a great idea. The Ultima for an all wheel drive sedan is hard to beat. And I wouldn't touch a Titan because realistically, even though it has a great warranty, they've had problems in the past. Realistically, all these other incentives are just eh, 1.9% on an Armada. Yeah, it's okay. The Subarus are desperate to sell the Solterra, so they're offering 0% up to 72 months. They have great lease specials. If you're trying to buy a Solterra and you're willing to buy a subpar EV, guess what? You can get a great deal on one. That being said, 2.9% on the Ascent and Outback isn't anything really special. One thing that was really cool is as the month went on, Outback actually changed their specials as the to a better and better deal. So know that Subaru has been changing these month to month. So if you're willing to wait to the second half of the month, Subaru might give you better incentives as they're trying to close down deals. Last but not least, talking about Toyota on Volkswagen. Toyota is not doing anything special. They are doing 2.99% on the Tacoma, which is pretty awesome. And then 3.99 on everything else. What kind of blows my mind is Lexus is doing pretty decent deals. 2.49 on almost everything. Well, Toyota seems to fall behind. I understand Toyota is going to be a more popular band than Lexus, but normally they team together. Look at Acura and Honda, for example. They're offering very similar discounts. Now, again, Toyota's not doing anything special, but they haven't done really anything crazy with incentives. Their inventory still is pretty darn strong, even though it's getting better. Better, they haven't been offering good incentives. Now, Volkswagen, these are just embarrassing. 3.9% up to 2023, 4.9% up to 2024. They're available cars. They are not that rare vehicles, and Volkswagen just hasn't made that anything great. I am not impressed by this list. Overall, if you waited from December to January to buy a car, guess what? These incentives are not the same, if not slightly better. Yes, a few cars got worse, but realistically, the majority of cars got better because guess what? End of year sales are just BS. That's exactly what they are. So if you guys like content like this, I want you to like, follow, subscribe. If you guys want a part two where I dig into these incentives a little bit more, let me know. In reality, this is meant to give you guys all the information you want. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you and have a great day.